So I've been into this about six months, so I'm an early person. I've been listening to you every morning, and the one thing that I'm having a struggle with is source energy. So I know that that is probably the biggest part. And when I'm meditating and trying to get in touch, I feel like I'm not allowing or receiving. Sometimes the flawed premise that you're beginning from is that I'm not in touch, I'm not in touch, I'm not in touch, I need to get in touch. And what if you were already in touch? What if you are an extension of source energy and you're already in touch? I guess logically I know that and I know that the only thing that could keep you from in the moment resonating with source are thoughts that make you feel uncomfortable when you think them. So if you've had a difficult moment, if there's something going on and your head is full of it, then sometimes it's hard to release those thoughts and allow that sort of neutral place, that non-resistant place where you can begin to perceive source. Because you see, it's not about you connecting with source, you're already connected. It's about you perceiving that you're connected. It's only your perception of your alignment that's ever in question because the alignment is always there. Source energy is flowing through you. Every cell of your body is a recipient of it. So you are already in connection with source. But sometimes you think thoughts, sometimes people think thoughts of unworthiness, which doesn't let them realize it. Or sometimes they're mad at somebody, which doesn't let them realize it. And it's the reason that we teach quieting your mind. So as you find something to focus upon that isn't much to think about, but distracts you from things you were thinking about, then it's easier for you to perceive your alignment with source. It's just about you realizing it. And really, when you're in the mode of appreciation, you're letting it flow. That feelings of passion, that's really connection to source. And we've been saying to our friends for a while, we would rather see you in a state of appreciation than in a state of meditation because both held no resistance and both are in alignment with source. It's just that when you are in appreciation, you're thinking thoughts, you're thinking source light thoughts, you see. So, Meditation is a wonderful tool to release resistance, but like all tools, it works better if there's not a lot of resistance to release to begin with. If you get yourself all balled up about something and really worried about something, as a last ditch effort you sit to meditate, you're not gonna be able to quiet your mind because the law of attraction is gonna take you there and there and there and there and there and then you're gonna say, Source must be out to lunch because Source didn't come and get me. Well, it isn't that Source was right there for you, you just weren't ready to perceive. And so let's use the word perceive and receive interchangeably for a little while. Your perception and your reception is sort of the same thing. So you can give yourself some advantages by meditating earlier in the day before your thoughts get moving against you, so to speak. Or stay there long enough, applying some effective tools until you are sure that you get there and then enjoy it. Just enjoy the milking of the sensation of connection. As we've watched so many of you, we've noticed that what works most for most of you is to find something to focus your mind upon. It can be something you're looking at. Sometimes people dangle crystals that are sort of shimmering in the light and they just focus upon the variety of that. Sometimes people light a candle and they just watch the flame. It sort of just slows your mind down. Esther likes to isolate a sound in a room and in this room you could focus upon the wind you can hear coming from the air conditioner can you hear that wind you just focus on that wind you have to focus on it because there's other things going on like us talking someone coughing there are other things that could distract you but if you keep bringing your mind back to that wind not thinking about where it's coming from or what it is, but just listening to the sound of it. That's 
going to quiet your mind. And so the question is, do you have the ability to focus? Well, the answer is yes, and Law of Attraction makes sure that things get big enough that they're very compelling to focus upon. But the bigger question, the more important question is, do you have the ability to focus upon what you mean to focus upon? Could you look into a segment of something and focus upon what you want to focus upon? And that's what the value of meditation is. It teaches you focus. You're not going to find that feeling of connection with source without focusing yourself into it because most environments are not conducive to that. Most environments have enough unwanted things present in them. You see what we're getting at? It's a very unusual time that any of you could be conditional enough in your life that you could find a point in time or a place in time where everything that you looked at was so perfect that you could just look around and find harmony with source. You focus yourself into your perception of source by finding really subtle vibrations. Because sometimes you go too hard into what you want. Sometimes people use meditation to sort of affirm what they want and without even meaning to they go over here too far to something that they want that hasn't manifested yet that they're not ready for and then they don't let what they are ready for happen but what you are all ready without exception what you are all ready for is to quiet your mind and allow source to be within you unrestricted there is not one of you who is not ready for that you see so it's just about non-thought Esther started by counting her breaths, not even keeping count of them so much as noticing this one's out, this one's in, this one's out, this one's in. It's really boring. This one's out, this one's in, this one's out, this one's in. Still boring. This one's out, this one's in. But after a little while, this one was delicious and this one was delicious and this one was satisfying and so was this one. And then she felt detached and she knew she was detached because her whole body felt numb sort of in the chair but not in the chair touching the chair but not feeling the chair a very clear distinction between her toe and her nose but she couldn't tell it because she was only focused upon in and out in and out not even about lungs not even about air in other words after a little while it was just all vague there was just no attention to anything. And when there's no attention to anything, then you are in pure concert with your source. Now you do that for a little while every day. And what will happen is you'll find that alignment and then before you know it, you'll think a thought that source is thinking. That happened to Esther for a while and she thought those were her thoughts. They sounded a lot like her. And so then she would just go back and breathe more and more and more and more. So we really appreciate your request for this because it is the sure way to release resistance. So we say release resistance and then. Once you release resistance, what that really means is you've stopped momentum. You've stopped any contradictory resistant momentum. Of course, you cannot stop the momentum of your source. So in stopping resistant momentum, you've allowed the momentum of love. You've allowed the momentum of your inner being's attention and appreciation of you. You've allowed your inner being's appreciation of you, which translates into your own feeling of worthiness. You've allowed calmness. You're just allowing well-being, you see. And then off you go. Instead now, of forcing it. I think say again? I think sometimes I try to force it. Think about that in light of what we've already been talking about. You've got some idea of what you want to achieve and why you want to achieve it. So you're looking for it and not finding it, and then you're messing up the readiness for what you're ready for. Esther sat here this morning for a little while. She came a little early and she could hear you in the room. And she was reaching for a sound that she could focus on. And she said to herself, I think I'll just focus upon this sound of joy because you were noisy and laughing. You were laughing and obnoxious. It sounded like music, you see. And so she wasn't looking for silence. She was just looking for something good feeling to focus upon. That's the answer, always the answer. Ready to be ready, and so that is the ultimate getting ready to be ready, because if you will spend a few minutes in the morning, 15 is enough, and it might take you 14 to get there, 
But once you get there, now you're ready to be ready, which means that your next moment in time is going to be more likely that you will find things of pleasure there. And your next moment, if we could convince you that this conversation isn't about preparing you so that you can be invincible or preparing you so that you can create anything or so that you can be or do or have anything. That's not what this conversation is about. This conversation is about you allowing yourself to be ready for what's raining down around you that you often can't see. Readiness for timing, readiness for clarity, readiness for the right thing to flow from you or the right thing to come to you. It's turning you into, over a little bit of time, a cooperative component to your own desires. You cannot be a cooperative component to your own desires if you are harboring any ill will toward anyone or to yourself, you see. So sometimes you have to kind of start at the very beginning and that's all right because the very beginning is no thought. And no thought then will lead to something that feels a little better and something that feels a little better and something that feels a little better. And then when you do and you will stumble onto a circumstance or an event or even a thought in your own mind that is not harmonic, which is not in harmony with your inner being, it's going to feel awkward to you and in its awkwardness you can then choose. This thought which doesn't feel so good, which is very small, really, in comparison to some thoughts that I've thought, because I've meditated, even these thoughts really can't get a lot of momentum going. And then, before you know it, you have bridged every belief into one that serves you. The belief that you held that you weren't good enough has morphed into one that, of course, you are. The belief that you held that life is going to be hard for you has morphed into the it's not difficult to be ready for something good to flow. The belief that you've held that oh this is good and this is good enough but the other shoe will drop will morph into oh contrast serves me so well and I always find what I'm looking for. Before you know it you will just feel well-being. You will find such well-being that you will be prepared for a world in upheaval. And that's such a nice thing because your world, if you look around enough, is always in upheaval. Alignment is what brings clarity out of chaos. And chaos is a good thing, not a bad thing. Because chaos is diversity. And diversity means choices. So you don't want to get rid of the diversity or the choices. You want to get better at focusing, you see. And so, oh, when you're good at focusing, then the world and the components of the world can be doing all the things that they're doing. And you just ride steadily through it, seeing the positive aspects there and there and there, finding positive aspects in the most unexpected places. And then, the more consistent you are at it, the greater your connection, the steadier your connection, the more satellite dish-like you are beaming in the signal of well-being so that others who haven't figured this out yet can be uplifted for a moment by your calm, by your clarity, by your acknowledgement of well-being, by your unwillingness to rant and rave and panic over whatever it is. You see, life is supposed to feel good for you. But these things are always true. You will never feel good if you don't have desires that you are allowing right now. You will never feel good holding a desire that you're not allowing. So how do you not disallow by focusing on something that doesn't hold the negative framework? You are better in no thought than in trying to bring a negative thought to a positive thought. Helpful? Yes. We are appreciating this conversation about meditation. It's a really wonderful time for it. Watch how you feel when you move through a day after you have meditated for a little while. Watch how different your day is. Watch what you're ready for. Watch what you rendezvous with. Watch how you feel. And watch how in time, and we're not talking about a long time, we're talking about a matter of a few days. Watch how powerful you begin to feel. How sure-footed you begin to feel. And then how eager you are to get out there where all kinds of things are because you know you're steady.